Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Irene Dunn and Don Amici in Unfinished Business. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The phrase unfinished business can mean a great many things to a great many people. For in the past of every man and every woman, there's some stray tag of adventure still uncompleted. A bit of drama never played to its end, or perhaps a love story only just begun. All that wide human appeal is part of Gregory LaCarva's new universal picture called Unfinished Business. And we're fortunate tonight in having the radio premiere right here in the Lux Radio Theater. That gives us Irene Dunn in the same part she played on the screen with Don Amici as our leading man. And off the record, I'll tell you that for months, we've been trying to find a play to fit this potent combination of stars. There have been a lot of stories about the young man from a small town who hunts fame and fortune in the big city. Tonight we have one about a girl with the same intrepid spirit who finds the adventure she's looking for. But along the way, she leaves a scrap of unfinished business. And in that lies the dramatic punch that makes this one of the most talked about pictures of the year. Of course, there's another drama about unfinished business. The one called Woman's Work is Never Done. But I suggest that it's done a whole lot quicker when they have Lux Flakes in the house. No mere man is supposed to be a competent judge of such technical household matters, but a radio producer is supposed to know something about his audience. I know how high your standards are, and I know from your letters that our product meets those standards. Anything must be good that can win the approval of as many women as Lux Flakes. So if you haven't tried it yet, you have some very important unfinished business at the store around the corner. Now the spotlight turns to the center of the stage as the curtain rises on the first act of Unfinished Business, starring Irene Dunn as Nancy and Don Amici as Tommy. Across the prairie land of the great Middle West, an eastbound flyer streaks through the night. With a flash of its headlight, it roars through the sleeping hamlets, thunders over the slow-moving rivers of Ohio, impatient to end its race with time, in the great terminal of New York. But the two gentlemen who occupy drawing room B are interested in another kind of race, a horse race. What do you say, Steve? You got it all figured out? It's a cinch. If we don't win the Pimlico special this year, I'll buy a new hat and eat it. <laughs> Without mustard? Without mustard. Do you think I'd come all the way out to this desolate country to buy a horse if I didn't have a hunch about it? Desolate is right. Look out there. Yeah. Wonder if anyone has ever discovered it yet. I just saw a couple of covered wagons go by. Want a drink, Steve? No, thanks. Well, there's nothing left to do except talk about women. Let's browse around, see what we can find. Okay, come on. I'll take this end of the train, you take the other. Right. How about a little $50 wager? On what? That I can find a better-looking girl than you do. It's a bet. See you later, Steve. Good luck, sucker. Oh! Oh! oh. I'm so sorry. Oh, my fault. I opened the door too fast. Not at all. Excuse me, please. Oh, conductor, uh, which way to the diner? Uh, second car up, miss. Uh, may I show you? I know right where it is. It shouldn't be hard to find. It must still be on the train. I'm not so sure. The way we've been bouncing around for the last couple of hours. Oh, I imagine we're still on the track. <laughs> Say, that's a very witty observation. Oh, hang on. We're going around a curve. This is the first time I've been on a train that had square wheels. <laughs> Oh, oh, no, watch oh, it, watch it. Oh, oh for heaven. Now, here, get up, give me your hand. Oh, wasn't that silly, falling like that? I'm awfully sorry. Did you hurt yourself? No, I'm all right. Only I'm, I'm afraid I did twist my ankle a oh, little. Oh, that's a shame. You better let me have a look at it. My compartment's right down there. Oh, no, oh, oh no, on, no, 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 I'm not. Just lean I'm... on my arm. Something silly like this would happen to me. Now, just sit back and relax. Now, let's see... Does your ankle hurt when I touch it so? No, no, but it's kind of embarrassing. Oh, don't talk back to the doctor. You know, you have a very delicate ankle, like a thoroughbred. What are you, a horse doctor? <laughs> 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 
No, not exactly, but I know a thoroughbred when I see one. Look, I've got to go oh, now. Oh, no, no, please. You're not afraid of me, are you? Well, I hardly know you. Tell me something. Do you live in New York? No, and don't tell me I'll look it. I come from Messina. Messina? Yes, you stopped there a couple of hours ago, remember? Oh, I thought that was just to take on water. Yeah, water and me. <laughs> you don't look like a small-town girl. Oh, yes, I do. This suit is the crowning glory of Messina's most fashionable dressmaker. The hat is uh, mostly my own idea, and the necklace, consisting of real pearls, cost $1.97 at the Bon Ton novelty. Why should you hide such a lovely throat? You certainly have a line. <laughs> but I mean it. You're very charming. Well, couldn't we just talk? There must be something to talk about. All right. What's your first name? Nancy. My name's Duncan. What's your first name? Steve. Nancy, you're the first girl that ever got wise to me. Oh, go on. <laughs> what do you do? How do you do? No, I said, what do you do? Oh, oh. <laughs> you mean for a living or nothing? Nothing. I'm one of those lucky people who doesn't have to work very hard, so I just play around with horses. Oh, rich, huh? I guess so. You don't seem very impressed. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? No. No, I'm laughing at myself. You certainly caught on to me in a hurry. Well, the things you said weren't unpleasant, even if you didn't mean them. Well, tell me something about yourself. Oh, there's nothing much to tell. I'm just a small-town girl. I did a little singing back in Messina, you know, choir work and that sort of thing, and now I'm on my way to New York. Maybe I'll find a career, and maybe I won't. Of course, in Messina, they think I'm going to set the world on fire, but I don't suppose New York will miss me much one way or the other if I'm not a success. Listen. Isn't that glorious? Oh, I think that's the most romantic sound in the world. I've always wanted to be on a train at night, roaring along with the lights going by, wondering about the people who live in the houses that skim past. The sound of the train was so ringing in my ears. It does something to me. I don't know what it is. It just does something to me. What? Why do you look at me like that? Please don't look at me that way. You are very charming, Nancy. Oh, no, no. You mustn't say that. You're lovely. Lovely. Oh, no, no, please, please. Steve, Steve. Oh, good morning, Nancy. Well, what do you think of New York? I couldn't see much of it coming in. I was afraid I'd missed you. You don't suppose I'd leave without seeing you? Well, I'd have died if you had. Well, look, Nancy, those fellows out there on the platform, they're reporters. They're very curious. I understand. Where can I call you later? I'll be at the Garfield Hotel for Women. I'll give you a ring. You won't forget. What do you think? I love you, Steve. Yes, come in. Hello. Oh, hello. What goes on? Well, I'm trying to learn this aria. Well, how about widening your area and going on a blind date with me? No, thanks. I'm just a career woman. Career woman? You've been locked up in the Garfield Prison for Women for the last three weeks. You're not going to spend the rest of your life sitting by that telephone. Well, I may get an audition, and I want to be ready. Look, honey, who are you kidding? I know what you're waiting for. Look at those newspaper clippings you're always saving. What do you know about Well, I'm not blind. Stephen Duncan honored at Yacht Club Ball. Stephen Duncan moves his stable to Saratoga. Honey, if you're carrying a torch with that wolf, the line forms on the right. Why don't you call him up and get it over with? If, if you must know, I have called him. Several times. And? He wasn't, he wasn't in. in. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Gee, I didn't know you had it that bad. I'll get over it. Oh, look, darling, he isn't worth thinking about. You've just got to shake out of it. You're an attractive girl. Why, you could draw a number out of a hat and get a much nicer guy than Steve Duncan. Do you hear? I hear. Well, that's more like it. And listen, you're going places with that voice of yours, too. Yeah, I've been standing right in one spot so far. I don't care. There are lots of places for your type of voice. Plenty of places. For oh, she's a jolly good fellow. For oh, she's a jolly good fellow. Mrs. Schultz is a jolly good fellow. Happy birthday and many returns. And the message is signed Edna Gittins. You're welcome. Here, Nancy. Another batch of singing telegrams. Phew, another batch. I'd better take time out and get my breath. The top one is for Billy Ross. Billy Ross, who's he? The famous nightclub owner. This is probably the only chance you'll ever get to sing for him, so do your darndest. Say, thanks, Mrs. Hatch. 
A nightclub owner, huh? Hello? Hello. Sterling, 85324. Speaking. Uh, Mr. Billy Ross. Speaking also. Mr. Ross, I have a singing wire for you. Just a moment, please. Go ahead, go ahead. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. Billy Ross is a jolly good fellow. Happy birthday and many returns. Sign the gang. Say, that's very nice. You have a very good voice. Oh, thank you. Are you fat? No, I'm not. Well, be at the Cafe Corner at 10 tomorrow morning. I can use a voice like yours. The Cafe Corner? I'll be there. Thanks. Bye. Oh, Mrs. Hatch, I'm going to sing for him. What? I'm going to sing for Billy Ross. I'm going to sing at the Cafe Corner. This is the Cafe Corner, Sterling 85234. Good evening. I'll connect you. This is the Cafe Corner, Sterling 85234. Yes, just a moment, please. Fine, Nancy, you're doing fine. But, Mr. Another Ross... Another few days and you'll have it down pat. It's very tricky, I know, but I'm sure that Mr. Ross, you... I have a much better voice than this. When I took this job, I May thought I you... have a number, please? Why, of course, madam. Take care of the lady, Nancy. Normandy 61043, please. Booth 4, I'll connect you. Thank you. This is the Cafe Corner, Sterling 85234. Hark, hark, the lark. Oh, that's very pretty, very, very pretty. Do you wish to make a call, sir? Crenshaw 90130, into which booth do I go? Booth <laughs> two, please. I shall go and make my speech. I think you are just a peach. <laughs> oh, there you are. Hello, Billy. Greetings. Can I, uh, can I speak to you a little privately? Certainly. Wait just a minute, will you? Uh, miss. Uh, yes, sir? Cancel my number. Don't put it through. You're a good number yourself. Woo-woo. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cafe corner. Oh, uh, Billy, what's in your mind? Mr. Duncan, your brother's here. Oh, no, not dear old Steve, whom I despise to the depths of my soul. And what does Mr. Steve Duncan wish? Well, he was asking me about your drinking. Ah, uh, where is he? And that, right inside. He wants to see you, Mr. Duncan. Well, evening, Stephen. Hello, Tommy. Hello, Sheila. How are you, Tommy? You want to see me, Stephen? Pull up a chair. I want to talk to you, Tommy. Yeah, I know. I drink too much. People are beginning to talk so and so and so and so. This is one of a series of lectures, Sheila. After all, Tommy, he's your brother. Yeah. You know, an older brother's like a locomotive. If you took it off the train, you wouldn't have any head-on collisions. Who's this new number you've been running around with, Tommy? That is none of your business. You're just out of one breach of promise. You're sticking your neck out for another. I want you to listen to this, Sheila. It's going to be very enlightening. Personally, I'm going to have a nap. <laughs> Nancy, Nancy, I want you for a minute. What is it, Mr. Ross? Another birthday? Yes, now here's the cake. It's that fellow over there, Mr. Stephen Duncan. Stephen. That's it. Just say happy birthday, Stephen. Got it? Yes, I've got it. Well, hurry up. Hurry up, Nancy. <laughs> You'd better cut it out. I'm telling you. And that's that. Are you all finished, Steve? Yes, I've finished. Now, do you want me to tell you something? I don't like you. Excuse me. Oh, look, Steve, it's a cake for you. Oh. Hello. Hello. Happy birthday, Stephen. Thank you. That's, uh, that's very nice of you. Steve, come over and join the party and bring your cake. Uh, <laughs> coming, coming. Come on, Sheila. Come with us, Tommy. No, thanks. I'm very comfortable right here. Well, Steve, wait. What's the rush? Steve. Say, so what's the matter? Are you crying? No. What would I be crying about? Hey, hey wait a minute. Wait. Hello. Just a moment. I'm trying to get your number. Hey, hey, look. Did that dopey brother of mine say something on the line? Please go away. I'll be glad to help you dry those tears. I'll dry my own tears. This is a cafe corn. I don't blame you. That routine drive anyone nuts. Let me have those earphones. No, I'm all right. Go on, do as you're told. Go over in the corner and have a good cry. I'll handle this thing. Say, how about that number? You just name it, brother, and you got it. I've been trying to get it for 15 minutes. No extra charge for that. Hello? Why didn't somebody say something? Swab's fish market. Could I sell you herring? 
Uh, what was that number, buddy? Bryant 7, 7100. Hey, that's a pretty hard number. You couldn't give me an easier one, could you? I'm kind of new with this. Hey, what is this, a gag? Hello, 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 it's the aquarium. April Fool. I'm all right now. Come on, let me take the board. Uh, start in with a cafe corn or gag. Now, come on, you're getting out of here. No, I can't. You need some fresh air. Go on, get your head. But look. I'll fix it with the boss. We're going for a ride in the park. This is the Cafe Koa Nor. Nobody comes here anymore. Wonderful way to see the park, isn't it? Uh-huh. I do this all the time. I rode around one of these old cabs for two days once. Um, uh, you don't seem very happy. I don't feel very high-spirited. Well, you feel better after you get used to the fresh air. Say, uh, uh, what did that brother of mine say to you that made you cry? It wasn't what he said. I guess it was the way he said it. Now, look, don't hold back just because he's related to me. He's just one of the tricks nature plays on the human race. You shouldn't talk that way about your own brother. You've never been a younger brother, so you wouldn't understand. All my life, I've been taking second place. Second-hand roller skates, second-hand bicycles, second-hand cars, second-hand polo ponies that couldn't even stand up. Oh, how you must have suffered. Say, whose side are you on, anyway? Tell me, who was out with him tonight? With whom? Your brother. Oh. Oh, that poor, unfortunate girl is his fiancée. Is she nice? Much too nice for him. Does he love her? Hmm? As much as he can love anybody. They'll probably be married soon. Yeah, too soon for her sake. I think it's next week. Uh, why are you so interested? Just curiosity. Well, if you'd like to go to the wedding, I have an invitation I'm not going to use. <laughs> You're joking. That's one night I'm going to get beautifully swacked. I hear you drink more than is good for you. Yeah, it's an escape. You'll end up by ruining your health. <laughs> health is like money. It's no good unless you spend it. What are you running away from? Life. I don't see how drink helps you avoid life. Are you being naive? No, I'd like to know. How would you like to go out in the town some night and get some learning? I like it. I like it. Wonderful. I'll tell you what. Let's make it the night my brother gets married. That'll give me something to do, huh? Right. <laughs> Sorry we haven't got a better table, Mr. Duncan. No, that's all right. I'll probably be under it before the evening's over. <laughs> uh, what would you like to drink, Nancy? Uh, whatever you have. Well, let's see. A couple of whiz booms, Joe. Uh, yes, sir. What are they? Well, you hear the whiz, but you don't feel the boom. <laughs> Sounds delightful. Say, uh, what are those things you're wearing? Just a corsage. Orange blossoms. Well, it isn't your wedding tonight. No, but I like to get into the spirit of things. What time are they being married? The poor girl starts the last mile around eight. What time is it now? Let's see. She's still got a half hour of life. Oh. Oh. What's the trouble? Those train whistles. Can't stand them. Oh. Uh, Joe, tell them to stop blowing those whistles, will you? I'm sorry, sir, but uh, those are from the trains down below. I know that, but have them stopped anyway. Uh, yes, sir. Your cocktail, sir. <laughs> Funny looking cocktail. Looks like milk. It is. Milk with authority. Uh, ooh. What's the matter? Did you like it? Oh, no. The man who invented it must have hated his childhood. <laughs> well, here's to our friend, the cow. Here's to a short life and a milky one. Right. Joe, keep him coming, will you? Where's Boom? <laughs> Got a good name. Yeah. Would you like another one? No. What time is it now? Let's well, see. She still got two minutes. Say, tell me, have you ever been married? No, I've never had time. Oh. Have you ever thought about it? Yes, I have. You know, it's uh, it's uh, kind of a shame to waste those orange blossoms. Why don't you marry me? Seems to be in the air. Don't talk nonsense. Oh, well, do you want to be an old maid? No, I don't want to be an old maid. I want excitement. I want to go places and do things, have fun. I want to play, do a lot of crazy things I've never done before. Oh, well, you can do that if you're married. But I don't love you. Well, do married people have to be in love? Well, that's what I've always been taught. Where are you from? Messina, Ohio. Oh, Indian country. <laughs> well, let's drink to my poor sister-in-law, hmm? Here's to... Forgetfulness. Right. Say, you know something? I know a fellow who's got a plane that'll fly us to South Carolina. 
That's what we do in South Carolina. What time is it now? Uh, eight. Straight up. Eight. Here's to your brother's happiness. Ah, never mind about him. Say, uh, do you think you might uh, change your mind about me? She'd just be walking down the aisle now. Well, how about it? What? South Carolina. I knew a girl who went to school in South Carolina once. Well, I thought you said you came from Ohio. I didn't say I didn't. Well, who did? Well, you said something about South Carolina. I asked you where you came from, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> I said I came from... I came from... <laughs> I came from Ohio. <laughs> It's me, Elmer. Oh. Get my bath ready, will you, Elmer? Yes, sir. Where are you? I'm under the bed. <laughs> what are you doing under the bed? Say, Elmer, have they gone? Who? Oh, they wanted to play, and I, I had to hide. Who wanted to play? The purple men. <laughs> oh, you've been seeing them things again. Oh, if that bed wasn't full of them last night, I'm an Easter lily. But you look more like a drooping petunia. Now, look, Elmer, you're only my butler. Now, don't take any liberties. Petunia requires water, now get me some, will you? Okay. Any calls this morning? No, but them newspaper guys are downstairs. What newspaper guys? Oh, the regular bunch. Well, what do they want? They want to take pictures of you and the bride. Well, don't let them in. I didn't. What bride? Well, I imagine she's yours. Anyhow, she's in the next room having breakfast. Now, see here, Elmer. I don't mind a reasonable amount of informality on your part. But if you choose to take advantage of my weakened condition, I'm afraid that this beautiful friendship is at an end. Now, what was that about a bride? Well, you might try rapping on the door. Maybe she went away with them purple men. <laughs> if you're joking, I flatly refuse to give you a recommendation. Knock on the door. Who is it? Oh. I told you. Uh, say, Elmer, uh, what, do you, what do you call those things that fizz? Huh? I'll mix one up for you. Yeah, better, better make it a double. Huh? Good morning. Oh, it's you, huh? Who did you think it was? Did you sleep well? As a uh, matter of fact, I'm just coming to. Huh? You seem terribly nervous. Well, that's not, not unusual with me. I'm a little scared myself, but then, see, I've never been up in a plane before. Maybe that's what did it. Were you up in a plane? Or maybe it was the milk. Oh, yes, milk, milk can do it. Yeah. What, what were you saying about a plane? Don't tell me you're vague about it, too. Imagine flying to South Carolina and back all in one night. Yeah. It's a great day and age, isn't it? <laughs> Anyhow... Here we are, married. Oh. Yeah, yeah, here, here we are. Well, you wanted it. Didn't you? Oh, I'm here. Well, let me be one of the few to congratulate you. You're a very lucky man. Here's your fizz. Thanks, Elmer. Oh, don't tell me that's one of those things. No, this is one of those things that chases those other things away. <laughs> Elmer, you might mix one for... For Mrs. Duncan. This, by the way, is Elmer. Yes, he served my breakfast. She ate eggs. You ate eggs? I always eat eggs in Messina. Uh, uh, is that a new way of cooking them? <laughs> no, that, that's where I come from. Oh, oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, remember that, Elmer, will you? Remember what? Mrs. Duncan likes eggs for breakfast. I'll try. Of course, we could have it annulled. But you said you believed in doing things impulsively. Well, if I said it, I meant it. Don't you remember saying it? Uh, yes, of course I do, yeah. I wonder if many marriages start off like this. Well, don't ask me. I'm, I'm a stranger here myself. <laughs> you suppose his marriage will be like this? Whose? You know, your brother's marriage. Uh, what's he got to do with it? Nothing. Your fears, madam. Thanks. Well, 
Here's to a short life and a merry one. You know? <laughs> this is going to be fun. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Mr. DeMille brings you Act Two of Unfinished Business, starring Irene Dunn and Don Amici, in just a moment. Meanwhile, I bring you news that every woman will want to hear, the latest on the stocking situation. Oh, Sally, you have some questions there. Will you read them? The answers I'll give you are based on the latest information from leaders in the hosiery field. How long will we be able to get silk stockings? In fair quantities, at least through this year. How much nylon will there be next year? Nylon production will be stepped up as rapidly as possible. Nylon accounts for more than 18% of this year's finer stocking volume. Next year, the supply will be increased. And besides that, it will go further because nylon will be combined with other fibers. For example, we may have stockings with cotton or rayon tops and feet and nylon legs. What other kinds of stockings will there be? Well, whatever they are, they'll be lovely. For American inventors and manufacturers are the most ingenious in the world. Already, we have attractive lyle and cotton mesh stockings. New twists and finishes are being developed in rayon, and there may be brand new fibers. It takes time to develop them, of course, so it pays to be careful of the stockings you have. Will the new stockings bring new washing problems? No, because whatever they're made of, they'll be sheer and delicate. They'll need gentle care, and there's no gentler care than Lux. That's what experts say. Over 90% of the makers of all types of stockings, silk, nylon, rayon, wool, cotton, recommend Lux Flakes. Do all stockings have elasticity? Well, all of them must have some elasticity in order to give with the movements of your leg. And that's an important reason for using new quick Lux Flakes. Lux Care saves elasticity. Then stockings are less likely to go into runs or holes. To sum up, there's plenty of hope in the stocking picture. But meantime, it pays to give good care to every pair in your stocking wardrobe. Lux them after every wearing, so perspiration doesn't weaken the fibers. Never rub with cake soap, and never, of course, use harsh soaps. Just squeeze the gentle Lux suds through and then rinse. It's more important than ever now to stick to this safe care. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Two of Unfinished Business, starring Irene Dunn as Nancy and Donna Michi as Tommy. <music> Nancy's marriage to Tom has turned into a dizzy merry-go-round of New York's hotspots, where the lucky brass ring is forgetfulness. As yet, Nancy hasn't caught that ring. The memory of Steve Duncan is still fresh in her mind, but she's not giving up. Nancy's on the merry-go-round. And she's going to stay there. Tommy, is that you? Hello, darling. Sorry I'm late. I thought you were upstairs getting dressed. No, I get stuck at the lawyers. Uh, say, what are those things, my slippers? Don't tell me we're going to spend an evening at home. No, no, that's Elmer's idea. He's tired. Elmer, have you been complaining? Why should I complain? I've had two wonderful hours of sleep every night for the past two weeks. Mm. Well, you're practically a Rip Van Winkle. Shall I get the car out? I don't know. Where are we going tonight? I've reserved a table at the 68 Club. Get the car out. Okay. Better get dressed, Tommy. Look, uh, would it be too disastrous if we sat around and relaxed just one night a week? I've spent most of my life sitting around. Now I want to make up for it. Yeah, well, you don't have to do it all at once, you know. Well, it's your own fault. You said you'd teach me how to live, and I'm going to learn if it kills me. Well, learning how to live is one thing, but we didn't enter into a suicide pact. <laughs> don't tell me we're having our first quarrel. I don't see where you get any fun out of those night spots. Half the time, you don't even remember where you've been. Well, that's part of the fun, not having to remember. Well, I'm glad you're getting rid of a lot of inhibitions. Throwing breadsticks at head waiters and that sort of thing. But you ought to let your real self come through occasionally. Perhaps I'm not just everything you visualize. Piano needs tuning. Did you hear me? What? 
Maybe this marriage isn't turning out the way you wanted it to. Well, it's turning out the way you wanted it. That's not answering my question. For heaven's sake, stop playing that tune, will you? Why, what's wrong with it? It reminds me of Messina. My grandmother used to sing this tune. She didn't come from Messina. Oh, tell me you're not yourself tonight. What's bothering you? You really want me to tell you? Of course. All right, here it is. There was a little boy that met a little girl. They both liked to play. They played and they played. Had oodles of fun. And then the little boy fell in love. With the little girl? With the little girl. But she doesn't want to be in love. She doesn't want him to be in love either. Why not? Because love can't be trusted. Look, we're having a good time, Tommy. Why can't we leave things just as they are? Okay. I... I don't want you to think I didn't like what you just said. That I love you? Naturally, it's flattering to hear things like that. But... Oh, here, if you're going to play that, play it right. Why? What's the matter with it? It goes like this. Da, da, da. That's great. Go on, go on. No, go, get dressed. If you go through it just once, I'll get dressed. Well, all right. May not be as good as your grandmother, but I'll try it. How does it go now? I wandered today to the hill, Maggie. Yes, and what's next? To watch the scene below. <laughs> I've got it. All right, go ahead. I wandered today to the hill, Maggie. To watch the scene below The creak and the creaking old mill, Maggie Where we used to long ago The old grove is gone from the hill, Maggie Where first the Thanks a lot, Nancy. I'll go get dressed. Car's waiting. Mrs. Duncan, I said the car's out front whenever you're ready. We won't be needing the car tonight, Elmer. This is the first breakfast I've ever seen you eat. Maybe my cooking isn't so bad after all. You know, you astonish me. In fact, I astonish myself. Imagine me facing an egg at this hour of the morning. <laughs> so well, tell me, are these eggs Messina? An egg's an egg. <laughs> you know, I kind of think I'll eat here often. There's much better food than you get in any of those nightclubs. Oh, Tommy, don't mention nightclubs. <coughs> After some of my exhibitions, I'm still blushing. Oh, no. If you've got some inhibition in your system that's bothering you, get rid of it. That's my theory. Say, uh, did I ever tell you about my obsession? <laughs> no, didn't know you had one. Oh, yes. When I was a baby, a black cat crawled into my crib and sat on my chest. Scared the living daylights out of me. For years, I used to wake up in the night and see cat eyes looking at me. But I got rid of the thing. How? Well, my grandmother filled the house with black cats. Every place I looked, there was a cat. Upstairs, downstairs, in my bed, under my bed. Lady, I got so I could meow right in the cat's face and not even bat an eye. Doesn't it ever come back on you? Come here. I want to show you something. This may sound funny to some people, but it's not as funny as you may believe. Whenever I start to shudder at the thought of a black cat, I go right over here to this little cabinet, and there we are. You see? What's that? It's a black cat. Pretty? Oh, <laughs> I always knew you were a little boy playing with toys. You ought to be ashamed. Oh, well, look. Doesn't bother me a bit. Walk around it, step over it, like a meow right in its face. Meow. But that's not a live cat. Well, that doesn't make any difference. It's all in the mind. <laughs> what happens if you haven't got a mind? Well, there's lots of people get along without one. <laughs> By the way... Where would you like to go tonight? Well, now that we've found a home, why not live in it? Oh, 
You mean you want to stay home two nights in a row? Uh-huh. And three and four and five nights. Say, uh, you know what I was thinking? No, what? Would it be asking too much to have you meet a few of my relatives? Here? Mm-hmm. I can invite some friends, too. We got any friends? <laughs> I'll have you know I associate with a very undistinguished group of people. Would you... <laughs> would you invite your brother, too? No. My brother's out. Maybe you ought to invite him. I don't want him around. Well, after all, he's... He's just a black cat. Yeah. That's right. He's just a black cat. Nancy, dressed yet? In a minute. Radio's blasting out there. That means some of our guests have arrived. Oh, I'm a fine hostess. Oh, you're a gorgeous hostess. And in honor of this great occasion, I've just decided something. Tonight, I am not going to get plastered. Oh, tell me, marvelous. <laughs> Come in. Excuse me. What's on your mind, Elmer? I thought I ought to tell you that the bar flies are beginning to gather. Say, Elmer, come on in. Close the door, will you? Now, look, Elmer, I know this is going to be a strain on you, but let's see if tonight you can't be just a little bit formal, hmm? This is my best bib and tucker. Oh, well, that's fine. And you might also attempt to act like a butler. Very good, sir. Oh, that is infinitely better. Do you like this dress, Elmer? Well, it is goofy looking as some of the others. Ma'am. <laughs> Say, that's pretty formal. You got that ma'am in. <laughs> you ready, Nancy? Ready. Let's go. Hiya. Hello, Ann. Evening, Tony. Tommy, is this the precious flower? Hiya. Nancy, my cousin Nell. How do you do? Hey, you're better looking than I thought you'd be. Hiya, Nancy. Don't worry about Nell. She spent most of her life around horses. I like some people, too. Hello, Tommy. Oh, the guest of honor. Nancy, this is Steve, my brother. Yes, we've met before. How do you do, Mr. Duncan? How do you do? Good night. Good night, Nell. Good night, dear. Thanks. Good night, Mr. Duncan. I'm not leaving yet. Oh. You've got a very nice place here. Thank you. I imagine the view from the terrace is very pretty. May I show it to you? Please. There you are. Ah, very nice. The little girl from Messina has come a long way, hasn't she? Messina's not very far. Oh, it's a long trip for a lady with a sprained ankle. You... you do remember me. Vaguely. You gave a fine imitation of someone who didn't remember. Have you uh, abandoned your career? Marriage is a career. Especially if it's a lucrative marriage. Well, you have to marry a person for something. Money is something. Well, some people marry for love. Did you? Yes, I did. How nice. I think I ought to warn you. Tommy's only good for about one more settlement. One's all I need. I see. You know, your innocence had me completely taken in. For a time, I was even stupid enough to believe that you might interpret a flirtation as something more serious. Is that why you pretended to forget? It's much less cruel. That's the black cat theory. I don't know that one. If you face a little fact today, it can never become a black cat tomorrow. How many drinks have you had? Oh, I didn't think you'd understand. I don't. You're my black cat. I can face you now, and I'm not afraid. I can even kiss you. Goodbye, Steve. Steve. Oh, Steve. Well, hello. Oh, Tommy. Oh, this is very pretty. But I didn't realize you knew each other that well. Tommy. I think you're making a mistake. I'm always making mistakes. Elmer, bring me a highball, will you? I wish you wouldn't. You see? She has a maternal side, too. You may not have run into that yet. Now, listen, this is my fault. Now, I... there is a gallant fellow. I even get secondhand explanations. Secondhand baby shoes, secondhand polo ponies, everything secondhand. And now I find myself gifted with a secondhand... You ought to have your block knocked off. You're the one that's going to get his block knocked off. All right. Nancy, would you leave us alone for a few minutes? I want to hear all Tommy has to say. You don't feel that I'm being unfair, do you? I have it coming to me. Oh, now there is the kind of wife to have. She's all that any man could ask for. All that a couple of men could ask for. She's beautiful. She's clever. She doesn't tell lies. Why, she can even cook eggs Messina. Is that all you have to say to me, Tommy? It's what you have to say that's important. I haven't anything to say. Except I haven't anything to say. Have a good cry. 
Well, when do the fireworks start? Just can't wait for it, can you? But first, I've got a couple of things I'd like to tell you. You don't mind if I make myself comfortable? Not at all. Sit down. Please do sit down. Here's your highball. Elmer, bring uh, Romeo a highball, too. I don't want to take any unfair advantage. And get me another one while you're at it. Keep them coming, will you? Now, Go listen. on, go on. Okay. You know, Steve, I haven't made up my mind what I'll do with you yet. But I kind of think I'll have you stuffed and mounted. Then I'm going to hang you over the mantel, so I'll always have a reminder of my very deep affection for you. How many drinks do you think you'll need before you start knocking my block off? Knocking your block off has been my ambition for years. I just want to gloat over you a little while, that's all. Elmer, where's that drink? Come on, now, wake up. Come on, now. Come on. Look, 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 come, look on, out. come on, come on. It's four o'clock. You, you feeling all right? Elmer, Elmer. Did, did I knock him out? No, you knocked yourself out first. Well, what did he do? Did he give me a mickey? No, but you're going to have a headache. Oh, I feel all right. You look fine. Where, where's the body, huh? Body's gone. He left when you passed out. Oh, oh, afraid, huh? Yeah, you must have been. Oh. Send my wife here, will you? She's gone, too. Gone? Where? Where? Where'd she go? I don't know. You better let me put you to bed. Oh, no, I'm, I'm all right. Yeah, you look great. All right, all right. Let her, let her, let her go. Let them, let them both come on. Come on, on. now, come on. Let come on, come on. It's no good. It's no good. <laughs> Mr. DeMille and our stars, Irene Dunn and Don Amici, will be back shortly for Act Three of Unfinished Business. There's a lot of excitement in Patty and Ellen's tiny apartment tonight. Bill James, one of Patty's current heartthrobs, is home on leave from training camp. They've just finished dinner. Oh, Patty, if I'd known you could cook like that. Mm -mm. Just like the book says, about the way to a man's heart. Well, I hate to tell you, Bill, but Ellen's the chef tonight. I'm just chief cleaner up and dishwasher. Say, I'm the best little bubble dancer in this man's army. And have I had plenty of practice. Come on, girls, on convoy to the kitchen. Why, Bill! <laughs> No, Bill James hasn't lost his mind, nor is he taken to cavorting around with a balloon. Bubble dancing is our new army's term for dishwashing, and a very descriptive one it is, too, when you think of the rich, bubbly suds you get from Lux Flakes. Why, with new quick Lux to do the work for you, kitchen policing's no trouble at all. You see, you get faster suds with Lux, and more suds, ounce for ounce, even in hard water, than with any of ten other popular soaps tested. And best of all, New Quick Lux saves you from rough, red dishpan hands. A problem that doesn't worry the army, but means a lot to Mrs. American Housewife. So, ladies, no more dishwashing. It's really bubble dancing when you use Lux Flakes. Get a thrifty big box from your grocer tomorrow morning and keep it handy in your kitchen. New Quick Lux comes in the same familiar package. Costs you no more, and one big box will do dishes for about 45 meals. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. The curtain rises on the third act of Unfinished Business. When Nancy left Tom, she seemed to vanish into thin air, lost in the crowds and turmoil of New York. Now, more than a year later, Tom has found her again, singing in the chorus of the opera. She's just coming out of the stage door as Tom steps to her side, a dim figure in the whirling snow. Hello, Nancy. Oh, hello. I hope I didn't frighten you. Well, it is a bit of a shock. I happen to be at the opera tonight, and I saw you from the box. You must have good eyes. I'm behind the scenery most of the time. Uh, which way are you going? This way. You mind if I walk along? No. I didn't know you'd taken up your career again. Oh, you'd hardly call it a career. Well, I guess it's all right if it makes you happy. 
You're happy, aren't you? I don't know. I've been too busy to give it much thought. Well, I've been doing a lot of thinking this past year. Have you? Yeah. The Army has a way of toughening the muscles and softening up the pride. The Army? Oh, haven't you heard? There's a lot of us in it these days. Well, I can't quite picture you... Anyway, you mustn't allow your pride to suffer. You aren't giving me much of an opportunity to say some of the things I'd like to say. Well, I thought you said about everything the last time I saw you. I don't suppose you could ever forgive me, could you? You know, I was pretty much hurt at the time. Well, maybe you had a right to be. I didn't have any right to be crude. Well, anyway, that's past history, and this is where I get my subway. Well, my car is right here, if you'll let me drive you where you're going. No, thanks. Don't want to get used to luxury. Well, uh, do you mind if I ride with you on the subway? Do you want to? I'd like to. Come on. This is a kind of tough neighborhood. Oh, you get used to it after a while. Here's the house. Why do you live way down here? It suits my income. Why don't you live on my income? I prefer to live on mine. Can I come in? Well, oh, I guess we can stand in the hall. It's warm anyway. I thought maybe we could go someplace and sit down. No. No, we hadn't better. Uh, 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 visitors aren't allowed upstairs after 10. Well, how about husbands? Or am I? That's up to you. I tried to find you for a whole year. Did you? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, as a matter of fact, I wrote you several letters. I never got them. I never sent them. Why? Well, I wasn't sure of the things I wrote. Tell me, is that... that other thing all over? Well, that was one of the things I wasn't sure about. Well, are you sure now? Are you through with them? Tommy, do you care anything about me? Yes, I always will. Then will you... Try to understand what I'm going to say. That all depends. Look, Tommy. Everything that's ever happened to me has been my fault. You understand that? I'm willing to understand anything. I'm no top sergeant. I've outgrown some of my childish notions. I haven't had a drink for a year. Oh, that's wonderful. But a fellow's got to have something to go on. If that other thing is all over, why don't you tell me? You said coming down here that you hadn't seen him since that night. That's true. Well? Tommy, I lied to you once before, and I won't do it again. Our whole marriage was based on a lie. That might have been all right, except that you fell in love with me. At least I thought so. I did. And I became very fond of you. I was the one who didn't play fair, because when I married you, I was in love with someone else. I don't care about them. I want to know about now. Are you in love with that guy? No, I'm not. Look... Please try to understand. In the lives of all women, there's some unfinished business. There's nothing you can do about it. It's always there, a part of you. But it doesn't mean that another love can't be greater in a different way. Oh. Is that where I make my entrance? Oh, Tommy. The point is now clear. Nancy loves my brother. Tommy loves Nancy. But nobody loves Tommy. Except Nancy. But in a different way. Well, I didn't have anything to do with love or its distribution. There are a lot of women like me, Tommy. Good women, faithful wives. But they're not foolish enough to say the things I'm saying. Look, why don't you sue me and get a handsome settlement? Why hang on to something you don't want? You are something I want. No, thanks. I can do without Spectre standing behind me. How can you be married to one man and dreaming about another? What kind of a woman are you? I'm not being a woman. I'm being honest. Well, why can't you be both? I'm trying to be. All right. Maybe you'd better run along upstairs. Maybe there's somebody up there waiting for you. Tommy, please. Is there? I get it. There's probably somebody up there you don't want me to see. Would his name be Duncan? Tommy. Sure. I might have known. Good night.
I can't get any more clothes in this group, Nancy. Never mind, Sarah. There's plenty of room in the other one. Oh, Sarah, I still owe you something on last month's rent. Ugh, what's rent? What I'd like is to see you stay here, rent or no rent. I can't stand to see you go. Oh, please, Sarah, Sarah, I feel low enough as it is. That husband of yours. I'd like to take a knife and cut him in little pieces. That's probably the man for the trunk. I'll answer. Is uh, Mrs. Duncan here? Who are you? My name is Duncan also. Ah, you're that husband. For two cents, I'd push all the way down there. Sarah, stairs. Sarah, it's all right. He's not my husband. Come in, Stephen. Oh, thanks. Sarah, would you leave us alone? I'll call you. I'll be upstairs. Looks like you're going on a journey. Uh, it's the same one, only back the other way. Oh? Leaving any memories behind? Isn't that where memories are usually left? I'm sorry that some of them are unpleasant ones. I see. You've been talking to Tommy. I saw him a few minutes ago. He's leaving for camp tonight. Nancy, if you have any illusions about me, I'd like to dispel them. My illusions are my own. You may be foolish enough to wreck your own life, but you have no right to wreck Tommy's. I'm glad you're capable of some kind of love, even if it's only brotherly. So far as I'm concerned, you're just a girl I met on a train. Yes, I've known that for some time. Am I standing between you and Tommy? No. Why don't you go back to him? I wanted to. Why didn't you? Steve, would you mind leaving? I've quite a lot of packing to do. Now listen, I... You don't mind if I make this a threesome, do you? It won't be a threesome long because only two of us are going out of here. Tommy, you're not going to make a scene. You're right. I'm just going to make a mess out of my brother. You haven't got the nerve. Tom... I figured you'd be coming up here. And this time, I'm not going to fall under the table until the job is finished. You're going to behave yourself. Look out, I'm making history. You're just a spectator. You can't get him out of your mind, I'm going to knock him out of it. Put up your hands, brother. She isn't worth fighting about. You can't talk that way about my wife. Oh! It's one I learned in the army. How do you like it, Steve? Does it make you feel better to knock me down? Get up and try another one. Thanks, I'm very comfortable right here. There's your dream lover, Nancy. Take a good look at him, will you? What's that? That... That is your son. My... My son? He's not accustomed to family brawl. My son? Where, where is he? Well, guess I might as well run along. Wait a minute. Why did you come here, Steve? I thought I could talk a little sense into you, but I guess you don't need it. You knew Tommy would come up here, didn't you? I thought he might. He's been wanting to sock me for so long, I... I figured it would be good if he got it out of his system. I don't think you'll have any trouble with him now. I see. Thank you, Steve. It was sort of an obsession with him. Yes, we all get them once in a while, don't we? <laughs> sure. But you get over them. Yes. Good night, Steve. Good night. You know, Nancy, I once said you were a thoroughbred. You really are. Good night. Nancy. I'm coming. Nancy. You know something? Yep. You know, he, he looks like me. Of course he does. That's why I call him Tommy. Nancy, is this... Is this the other kind of love you were talking about? That's it. Well, this is the kind of love I've, I've always wanted. Look, can you... Can you be ready to leave in ten minutes? Where are we going? Fort Dix. I'm ready now. Come on, then. Up you go, Tommy. Come on, Tommy. Come on, darling. <laughs> We're in the army now. In a moment, our stars will return to the microphone for their curtain calls. And now, for just a moment's time, we'll tell you about Lux in Rhyme. Sing a song of soapsud, a song about a few of all the things around the house that Lux can do for you. Let's start with window curtains. They tell an awful lot about the way your house is kept all fresh and clean. Or not. So Lux them well and often. It's easy, you'll agree. You get a lot of suds so fast with new quick Lux, you see. Then Lux is grand for blankets. It's mild and pure and so. It keeps them furry, soft and warm. And gets them white as snow. 
Or if they're pink or green or blue, keeps colors lovely longer, too. Lux cleans your floors, it washes doors, takes children's scrawls off painted walls, cleans Persian rugs, oil paintings, jugs, piano keys with greatest ease. And when it comes to washing dishes, Lux does, does what, what every, every woman wishes. wishes. Yes, does dishes in a trice, and it lets your hands stay nice. So we don't see, for goodness sakes, how you can live without Lux Flakes. flakes. Well, there's a lot of truth, as well as a bit of poetry, in our story about the way new Quick Lux helps you around the house. Does every soap and water job quickly, thoroughly, thriftily, and saves your hands in the bargain. Keep big boxes of new Quick Lux in your kitchen, bathroom, laundry, so you'll always have it handy whenever and wherever you need it. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. A little unfinished business still remains for the evening. And that's a well-merited curtain call for Irene Dunn and Donna Michi. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. It was grand coming back again. Yes, C.B., I enjoyed it, too. But who wouldn't enjoy playing opposite Irene Dunn? Now, mm. Don, there's anything you can't do. You invent telephones, you pinch hit for Bing Crosby on the radio, and now you make me blush. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's very becoming. You're two of a kind, I'm afraid. <laughs> you know, Irene, I wish you'd tell the audience something about the way you made the picture, Unfinished Business. How that unique director, Gregory LaCava, works. Yeah, I've heard something about that, too. How does it go? Well, there wasn't really a script of the picture until it was all finished. We just had a sort of an outline of the scenes, and most of the dialogue was shot, was made up right on the set, just as the picture was shot. Well, that's a swell idea, but I can think of places where it wouldn't quite work. Suppose you were shooting a big storm scene and reaped the wild wind, C.B., and Ray Milan was about to be swept overboard. Might be kind of embarrassing if you had to hold on until you could think of the right line, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you, you have a point there, Don. <laughs> but with the right play, Gregory LaCava's way of directing certainly gets delightful results. What play are you doing here next week, Mr. DeMille? Next week, Irene, get ready for a shock. Next week, we introduce two new stars to the legitimate drama. They're famous, in fact, notorious. Their names, Abbott and Costello. <laughs> yes, yes, the comedy sensation of the year will be right here next Monday night. And you'll hear these two uh, uh, zanies in the universal picture that made the nation Abbott and Costello conscious, Buck Privates. It's a story of the way life is certainly not lived in the army, but might be if Abbott and Costello were really Buck Privates. Frankly, I, I won't make any prediction about next week, except that I don't know what's going to happen. Well, C.B., that's for me, and I guess about 20 million other people, too. Good night, C.B. Uh, good night. <laughs> good night. There was gold in that star acting. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Bud Abbott and Lou Costello in Buck Private. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Meet Mr. Meek is coming back on the air. Yes, day after tomorrow, Wednesday night's favorite radio family will be coming around to your house again. You remember Mortimer Meek, the soft-spoken little man who has an uncanny way of getting out of trouble. His daughter Peggy, the one person who thinks he's important. His wife Agatha and his brother-in-law, Louie, the hungriest man in the world. Well, if you haven't met the Meek family, you're due for a treat. You'll laugh at them and you'll love them, too. Now, that's Wednesday, day after tomorrow, on most of these stations. After Meet Mr. Meek, stay tuned in for Big Town, the exciting drama starring Edward G. Robinson, which starts again the same night. Check your newspaper for the time and station on both these fine programs. Heard in tonight's play were Gail Gordon as Steve, Dick Elliott as Elmer, and B. Benaderet, Virginia Gordon, Verna Felton, Fred Mackay, Arthur Q. Bryan, Jean Ray, Jack George, Betty Ventura, Monroe Brown, and Leon Ledoux. Irene Dunn is currently appearing in the Universal Picture, Unfinished Business. Don Amici will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture, Confirm and Deny. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Roy. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>